Gary, it's lovely to see you. I'm here. You are, and from you're... the Bronx and Korea. I served two years in Korea, and here I am in California, happy. And you're still working. You yeah. just couldn't help yourself? Well, my wife doesn't like me around the house too much, so I, I do like to go to work. I meet new people, and uh, I... Uh, what can I tell you? I am Scorpio, I'm Italian, I have daughters, and I have sisters, so women have always been part of my life, and I like to make movies with women in them, and I work with some of the best. I remember a time when the Marshalls ruled Hollywood, when your sister Penny was working well, your career was firing. Yeah. Um, do you still get as much enjoyment out of going to set and making film? I do still get the same happiness and seeing, yes, it's great working with stars, but I see new people coming up and I don't know if you met Lonnie Love, who's very funny, and uh, Britt Robinson's in this movie, who's quite on her eyes, and even that kid out of England, uh, Jack Whitehall, he's coming along. This is his first big American shot, and so seeing them come up, and uh, a lot of little kids in the movie, they're going to come too, and to see that comes up is why I work and have happiness. Right. What is it about this kind of... I call them anthology movies almost, you know, that, that celebrate a, a holiday and it, there's a, an ensemble cast that really appeals to you. I do like ensemble cast because whenever I've done movies and done them regular, you know, about the third month you're shooting, everybody's getting a little bit bored and a little cranky. But with ensemble, you work three, four days, you're done. Uh, Jennifer Aniston <clears throat> worked the most in this film and did one of the best jobs around and ran all the emotions. She's quite a fine actress. But uh, to do uh, ensemble, nobody gets tired because they go home already. I once in a while do, but uh, I see a different person every day. Is there something significant about these these days, like Mother's Day and New Year's Eve and Valentine's Day, um, that make them attractive? Or is that just the background, the excuse? Well, people always have stress on holidays for one reason or the other. They don't know what to buy for Valentine's Day. They don't know who to date on New Year's Eve. But, uh, I, and what are you going to get your mother? There's so many different kinds of mothers, and I think for Mother's Day, first you should take your mother-in-law, then you should take your mother, and then you should take other mothers in the neighborhood, the PTA and the Parents Teachers Association, a lot of mothers, and mothers have kids, and this is about mothers and children. Right. Now, you, you've worked in Hollywood, obviously, you've got an extensive career. A long career. time. <laughs> an extensive career, as we say. Extensive career is a nice way of saying I'm older, <laughs> but I'm still playing softball, so I'm fine. Are you really? I do, senior softball, every week. Fantastic. What do you think has been the biggest change in Hollywood since you started working here? Cell phones. Everybody's on the cell phone. There's pictures, there's movies, there's everything. All the scandals are on the cell phones now. It's changed completely. I don't have one, but uh, because I don't want anybody to see my cell phone, well, I wouldn't do that. I have a pencil of paper. But I think it's changed that the uh, uh, franchise movies are very big. They like people who fly. They like people who, from the cartoon, Stan Lee, who the cartoon king, and I went to high school, same high school in the Bronx, Dewey Clinton. And uh, I think, uh, you know, action movies. But what has changed is also, uh, they told me when I made Pretty Woman, you can't have a romantic comedy play internationally. You have to have a shoot 'em up and action or horror. <gasps> people, want to, the audience to sit like this on their seats. I picture you sit a little, look, like, I think there is still an audience that likes to see a nice story. And uh, those pictures are harder to get made these days, but I'm still making them. Right. How much credit do you take for creating Julia Roberts? 
I didn't create Julia Roberts, she was there. I, I, you know, a lot of people you see in person and you say, oh my God, so beautiful, so handsome. And then you put them on screen, on the camera, and not so good. And some people are the opposite. When I first met Julia, she was a nice girl, okay. And then I put that camera on her and we lit it up and magic occurs. And so I, I helped her, at least everybody see her magic, but she always had it. You own the kilowatt smile though. That smile is the best. Not the best I ever saw, it's the best in the world, that smile. I gotta tell you.